All right. Well, that was obviously the most disappointing loss in Clemson history since the Kelly Bryant days at the very least, but arguably I would say more so than that. You know, the expectation going into this year is that DJ Uyangale was going to have a clean transition to Lawrence, maybe not be as good, but still be a very good quarterback. Uh, he's not good. Or he could be, but he's not been good this year. And when you hear hearing people say, oh, we know how talented he is. Do we? Do we really know how talented he is? 12 for 26 for 111 yards, two touchdowns and an interception. Granted, it was a tip pass, but it was still an interception against NC State. From the source, 21 points, counting the overtime touchdown, so 14 in regulation. And goes to double overtime, NC State wins 27-21. Now, Grand DJ Uyangle threw two balls on the money of Justin Ross in the second overtime. That should have both been catches. One could have been a touchdown. One probably would have ended up around the, the I don't know, the three to one yard line, somewhere in that range. That's the argument I'm talking about. Justin Ross, two drops basically. I didn't even get, didn't even get his hands out. I don't know if he ever really even located the ball on that second throw. Uh, in overtime, it was the last play of the game, and the other time he drops the ball. Where he, again, it was it was a difficult catch, but got both hands on it, basically locked it into his body, and it kind of let slip through. So. Justin Ross, a guy who I thought was going to be a first-round pick in the 2022 NFL Draft, probably wanting to go in the first two days now, based on how he's performed this year. Now, he was only cleared from his medical return in, like, August, so it's not like he's back to 100%. He's probably going to have to go back to another year, uh, for another year of school, because he has extra eligibility. He's probably going to come back next year, because based on what we've seen this year, there's there's just no way he's getting drafted in the first two rounds. So he's going to be coming back, because he's not been himself, and clearly was not himself today, and definitely was not an impact player in overtime. DJ Uyunglele, obviously another player, not an impact player for most of this game. Offensive line, mm, terrible. Terrible right run block, just no good. Not good, no, no good whatsoever. The run game, outside of one Will Shipley run that was 16 yards, and one run by DJ that was 37 yards. Run game, non-existent, not even worth it. And I say that because the only thing that was probably worse was... The, the stupid bubble screens that we keep running on offense over and over and over again that are always like two-yard gains or something like that. Just run the ball if you're going to do that because it doesn't even matter. It doesn't make a difference. It's not a good play. It's not a good play. We've run it constantly. We've run it ever since I started going to Clemson. We have run that play over and over and over. It's just a terrible play. And everyone knows they're going to run because Tony Elliott loves to do that. But for whatever reason... Uh, terrible play calling for most of the day. You know, totally uncreated. And RG3, I did not love RG3's commentary throughout the game. I didn't love it. Mostly because it was against Clemson, but again, I didn't love it in general. But he made the point that the offensive play calling was archaic. It was dull. It was boring. A lot of verticals. Not a lot of, like, not a lot of routes creating natural separation for receivers, which is something Clemson's receivers have struggled with, creating separations because a lot of these guys are bigger body guys. Frank Latson has been horribly uninvolved in the offense so far. E.J. Williams, one of the guys who you might trust to create national separation, uh, is injured right now. Now that we need to talk about injuries, uh, Will Shipley goes down. Looks like he has a significant injury late in the game. Uh, I won't pretend to understand anything about these injuries. I, I don't know. But he had trouble putting any kind of pressure on it after the game. Or when he's walking off the field, he had trouble putting any pressure on it. Uh, Brian Brzee got emotional. He went to the sideline during the game. He had an ice pack on his knee. Looked like his knee... Well, I won't exactly say that. It's like I said, I don't know exactly what happened to it, but definitely looks like a knee injury from what we saw and from how he was coming out of the tent. He was emotional. He had a towel on his head, hunched over on the bench. James Skalski went out of the game early on. Looks like he had something with his shoulder. He was emotional on the sideline, getting a towel on his head, uh, bent over, like looked like a Gatorade cooler. So three players, three impact players for Clemson. All very important players, Skalski being the heart and soul of the defense, the Michael linebacker, essentially. Uh, Brian Brzee being the best player on the defense, the most talented player out there. And then Will Shipley being the guy who we decided to let Lynn J. Dixon enter a transfer portal because we decided Will Shipley was good enough that we wanted to have him be our future back. All three of those guys go down with significant injuries in this game. So brutal loss of injuries. And by the way, tell again, Tyler Davis not playing. Tyler Davis had surgery recently. He's going to be out for a little while. I think it was six to eight weeks, which not that it really matters anymore. It's not going to be competing for a spot in the college football playoffs, so they don't even need him to come back. If you're Tyler Davis, you might as well just sit out the rest of the year at this point. Unless you find it advantageous to come back and you want to go to 22 and full draft or something like that. I don't know. And then E.G. Williams also not playing. Uh, where do I even start with this? 
where do I even start? I mean, this is just, I guess I've started, I guess we're five minutes in, but I mean, I feel like I haven't started yet. Uh, third down conversions. Let's just start there. Clemson, two for 11 compared to 11 for 21 for NC State. And that's what something NC State did well. NC State, I have to compliment them. NC State played well. NC State, I love their game plan for playing against Clemson. It was great. Uh, Devin Leary was very good tonight. And he was good at doing the most basic things. But the NC State was doing for most of the night, not all of the night. They had some big plays. But most of the night, they were getting the receivers downfield six to seven, six to eight yards off the line of scrimmage. Having them turn around and just sit in pockets of open space. And they would throw the ball at the like, pick and ca pitch and catch, excuse me, for, I don't know, somewhere between four to eight yards, four to six yards every play. It's just over and over and over again. Wide open space, too. For some reason, Clemson couldn't do that. That's that's one question I have. Why couldn't Clemson do what NC State was doing offensively? NC State had a relatively conservative game plan. They would run the ball a little bit here and there, and they would also, I mean, they ran the ball quite a bit, actually, but they ran the ball. They were pretty efficient with the running game, or at least efficient enough to stay on schedule. And then the play calling for a uh, passing game was, again, like I said, every play was going from anywhere between four to eight yards. And the guys were wide open all the time. Clemson couldn't buy a guy to get open for most of the game. And even when they did, DJ would throw the ball two feet over his head. But, yeah, I mean, why couldn't Clemson just execute a simple game plan? NC State executed a simple game plan that was conservative, that was basically don't make big mistakes, and they did it, and it went well. Their quarterback threw four touchdowns. Their quarterback was 32 for 44. For 238 yards, four touchdowns, no picks. The running backs averaged 4.3 yards per carry for... Uh, for Ricky Person, who was really good, by the way, in this game, I was really impressed with what I saw from him for 91 yards. Zombie Knight, the air guy, was more of like the more famous name. 23 carries for 79 yards, only 3.4 yards per carry, but, you know, that's kind of evened out by how well Person played. And they had the one star receiver. I'm not going to try to say his last name, because I know I said it on the broadcast. I was listening. I just cannot repeat those names. I apologize. I'm just not very good at repeating the names I hear. I'm very bad at that kind of stuff, actually. 116 yards of touchdown on 14 receptions. Fantastic game for him. Uh, Andrew Booth, the best cover corner, best cover player in Clemson, probably the second best defensive player in general behind Brian Brzee. Allowed two touchdowns in this game. This is a guy some people were saying was going to be the second best cornerback in his upcoming draft class. He allowed two touchdowns today against NC State. And I swear, he, he had some really good tackles in run support and coming up stopping screen plays and stuff like that. I swear he was on the ground a lot of time. He was slipping all over the place. Could not keep his footing. Uh, so he slipped and sliding over the place in coverage. He allowed no. He allowed a first down late in the game, late in regulation. That was really important. I, I was I was so disappointed with Andrew. Andrew Booth is someone I hold in high regard with how athletic he is, how good of a cover player he is. This is his second game in a row where he's been bad. So Andrew Booth, not a good day for Andrew Booth. Brian Rizzi, our most talented player on defense, gets injured. Miles Murphy had more of an impact today than he's had in the past. And so did Xavier Thomas, but still not, not nearly as dominant as I was hoping them to be today against NC State's offensive line. And NC State does have some talent up front, specifically at left tackle, but I didn't think they would be that good. I didn't think they were going to play this well against our defense. And again, defense was banged up. Yeah, I get it. Skalski was banged up, all this kind of stuff. But at some point, I'm, at some point, you just had to expect Clemson to just out-muscle NC State eventually, right? Never happened. Never at all. Never even got close to that. It looked like NC State was out muscling Clemson for most of the game. <sighs> Where else do we go? Talking about DJ. Talking about Justin Ross. Specifically, Justin Ross being at the end of the game. The offensive line getting no push in the running game. The defense. Uh, not enough of a pass rush. Andrew Booth making mistakes. What else do you have to talk about? The penalties. The penalties are a pretty good place to start. Uh, I mean, it's really... You can't say Clemson, there was some, yeah, there were bad calls. There were bad calls in this game. There was the missed face mask on DJ. There are a couple of really tic-tac plays that really should not have been penalties because it's just, it was just dumb in this game. The referees had such a trigger finger, which is why it's so annoying. They missed the face mask call on DJ and they called a, a defensive holding in overtime. But there was also a play that really, they called against NC State. It really probably wasn't a penalty at all. So I don't know. Went back and forth. Ultimately, 13 penalties for Clemson that cost 94 yards and 11 penalties for NC State that cost 105 yards. So fairly even, actually. So as much as I want to say the refs are terrible tonight, which you could say, still say the refs are actually terrible tonight. Uh, it was 
fairly even in terms of who got penalized where. And to be honest, the Clemson deserved a lot of those penalties because they were so undisciplined. The defense, especially, just so undisciplined, so irregular for Clemson's defense. Just be so jumpy and just this team lacks so much character, which is so weird because they have guys like Skulski still on the team. They have some guys who are still leaders on this team, and of course the coaching staff and all that. Like that they lack character. And I'm not saying they're the. I'm not saying each individual on this team lacks character. I'm saying this team as a whole lacks a character. They lack an identity. They don't have something to hang their hats on. They are nothing right now, except underachievers. Uh, time of possession. That's another place we have to talk about. I'm 10 minutes in this video, and I just got the time of possession, which they really should have started everything with. 18 minutes and 12 seconds for Clemson. 41 minutes and 48 seconds for NC State. Dear God, they more than doubled the time of possession for Clemson. No wonder Clemson's defense was getting, like, just getting shredded late in the game. They've been on the field for basically the entire, basically almost the entire football game. I mean, really. They've been on the field so much because Clemson's offense and offensive coordinator Tony Elliott were absolutely incompetent today. And Tony, that's the name I mentioned earlier that I need to mention more often here in this video because Tony Elliott, his play calling is so, it's been bad early in the year, and we expected they would adjust, and he has not adjusted. It's still the same trash play calling. It's still the same play calling that has not taken into account what this team does well and does not do well right now. This team does not throw the ball well right now. This team does not run block well right now. This team does not create separation on vertical routes down the field right now. So how do you adjust? How do you get DJ in a rhythm to feel confident? How do you open up the plays that Cornell Powell and Amari Rogers were hitting left and right last year? How do you hit those plays? I mean, Tony Elliott was awful today. And, uh, I mean, I don't, I hate calling people awful because I know I can never do the things they're doing right now. I couldn't. But just based on, not even their perform their performances from last year, just based on comparing what they did today to what they did last year. Tony Elliott's play calling, awful, unimaginative, did not play to whatever Clemson does well at all. Does not play to the strengths of the team, played right into the weaknesses, played right into NC State's game plan. DJ has looked like just the easy, him and Justin Ross have been shells of themselves. And Justin Ross has a reason why he missed football. He was out of football for a year. He was clearly like medically in August. I understand why Justin Ross is struggling. There's no reason for DJ to be struggling. Yeah, they have a bad offensive line. The offensive line's never been great. You know, and, and you're not facing a you're not facing a dominant this is not Georgia. You're not facing a dominant defensive front. This is NC State. You know, they're they're probably not gonna have anyone on that defensive front go to the NFL. Maybe one guy. So I don't know. I don't know. I apologize for getting a little loud in this video. I, I usually don't do that. Even during the games, I'm just not an angry person or anything like that. But it's just so... And I kind of did expect Clemson to lose this game when we hit halftime. So they had... What was it? it was their, they scored on was it the second drive they had the game. I think it was their second offensive drive they scored. It was either the second or the first one. And it looked really, really good. I thought they were going to run away after that drive. Run away to the game. And then you never did. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, I don't, I'm not trying to be a crowd about it or anything. I, I, like I said, give all the credit to NC State. They played really well. They had a really good game plan. Uh, I feel bad for Christopher Dunn, the kicker who missed three field goals. I feel bad for him, but I mean, it didn't cost him the game, so you know he'll be able to live through it. <laughs> but uh, I mean, where do you even begin? Even the punting, even Will uh, Will Spires, like even the punting, just was not good today. The punting was is, is especially the punts early in the game. The punting was bad for most of the game. Everything. Everything was bad, <laughs> except for the the one Justin Ross touchdown. The first Justin Ross touchdown on that first drive was really good. That was a really good drive. Also, they had a play to uh, – was a play to Ngata earlier in that drive too, I think? Those were two really good plays. That's why I thought Clemson was going to run away because they had two really good plays, and then everything just fell apart. You know, everything was terrible. And again, yeah, injuries have a lot to do with it. Injuries have a lot to do with why Clemson lost this game today. But even before the guys got hurt, they were playing bad. And even if Brian Brzee and James Gulski stay healthy, they're still going to be on the field for 41 minutes by the time they hit 
you know, the part of the game that actually is going to decide who wins. You need that, that last touchdown that NC State had. You've got a Clemson cornerback who does not locate the ball, and you've got the safety who lets the receiver get too deep on him, so he never gets back into the route. So, two bad play, two defensive backs who ruined their assignments there. And again, Andrew Booth allowed two touchdowns in the game. The best cover player on Clemson allowed two touchdowns today. And like I said, looked like he was sliding all over the place for a second week in a row, losing his footing left and right in coverage. But that's all I have to say. I'll be looking at the recruiting class, the incoming recruiting class for Clemson to see who's going to be important next year. Because this season is not over. We could still potentially win the ACC or something like that. I don't know. Maybe that's possible. Uh, but we won't be making the cultural playoffs. We don't deserve to be. Because we're not a top 10 team in the nation right now. Even in an expanded college football format, we would not be making the playoffs this year because we don't deserve it. This team doesn't deserve it. It's not good enough. It's not a good team. And it starts with the coaching staff. It starts with the coaching staff and it works its way down. But that's all I got for this game, guys. It's 60 minutes talking here. I really like to keep this video shorter than this, but it's just I had to get my little emotional rant in at the beginning and then start to calm down and go through everything a little bit more logically. But thanks for listening, guys. Uh... Football tomorrow, NFL. It's some good time action, some good at prime time action. Hopefully, I won't be making any videos because I got to work in the morning. So, sorry about that. But hopefully, maybe some reaction videos tomorrow afternoon. We'll see. If not, definitely on Monday. Guys, have a good night. Talk to you all tomorrow.